Center for Sanctuary Orchestra today, and um, here with us. Um, so the, I think I'm going to start right ahead with the first question. <laughs> okay. uh, so we uh, very much enjoyed the this is about being able to share all we could find uh, with our classmates, and uh, we would very much love to know more. You can give us more insights about your agency, your song. Um, well, I studied architecture, actually. Um, Singapore did not have an uh, architecture school, a landscape architecture school during my time, I'm not 46. <coughs> um, and so I went to Bali in Indonesia uh, because I draw quite a lot. I, I draw manga during my early days to make money when I was in school because uh, we're Malaysians. Poor, poorer than uh, Singapore, obviously. Um, <coughs> I was employed to draw, but also to do my internship. So I was employed by a garden designer, and uh, that's how I ended up with landscape because I wanted to travel. Uh, again, <coughs> Asians don't do so much backpacking, but uh, so I had to pay tax to Singapore, and that's how I started in 2002. Uh, so I never worked with anyone because since I started my career till now, and it's a bit, uh, kind of have to learn to, to, to run the office. Uh, it's been, how many years? Uh, 20, 20 years. years. This year, maybe 20, 20 years, years anniversary. Uh, and the way we run it is slightly not so systematic or corporate. Uh, <laughs> Meaning that it's, you know, but, but uh, Hong Chang came in and then, you know, and he's, he's trying to <laughs> systemize the whole thing now. Uh, because he comes from an architecture firm, uh, Wuha. Uh, if, if you know Singapore architect, uh, Wuha is quite famous. <coughs> um, I, I would say the difference is that it's running a bit on rhizome uh, rather than a tree trunk. A uh, tree trunk is good because I, I will benefit them. All the money will go to me, all the things I will decide, but uh, we decided to run it more like Rhizome is more like a studio, I think, uh, and it's, it's a case of uh, everyone gets to give their idea on every project. You want to add? No. And what is this? This is our <laughs> office. We are quite kind of similar to you guys. We are actually at the a uh, former horse racing compound in, in Singapore. So we, we just got to know a bit of the history of this compound. Mm -hmm. yeah. So at the seventh floor, and this is actually our sky horse. So we are in tropics, very different from here. We have like just hot and humid the year round. So we have, we have the chance to do a forest in the sky. Yeah, yeah us. Then we, we are very much into another species means it's those non-human species and then that's why we do some testing ground on the rooftop to see some animals like tree frogs, insects, yeah, in some morning lizards into our gardens. So that's what we are doing right now. We do all this rebounding research. It's a very interesting thing because uh, everyone says when you when you leave the school, um, most of the things you get to do in school won't be happening, but it's not really that true. Also. I think one of the things is that you always have to believe that the person paying you to do your work is not as smart as you are. So there's always a way to say it and trick them to kind of accept what you're doing, rather than if you follow <coughs> the hierarchy. So I think this, this was learned in a very interesting way because I've never worked with anyone. So I, I don't, don't quite understand this hierarchical things to go on, so there's a bit less fear. Um, and then you, you kind of dare to push what you learn in school uh, across. Um, 
I think of course that was uh, applied to the studio and allowing everyone to, to come up with their idea. But then again, uh, not, not everyone likes that because uh, it's too risky. When you do wrongly, uh, you get scolded, of course. When you give the wrong idea, you get guilty. But I think this, this is what uh, I, I, I do hope with the rise of uh, digital and all this, uh, ideas become the main thing. And not so much about the following system. And the creativity side that you learn in school can then start to, to be applied. It's also a very exciting period, I think, uh, with many changes happening. Uh, I mean, we do gardens, uh, but at this moment we are questioning what is the, the role of domestication of uh, plants uh, in the landscape of environmental crisis, uh, of a climatic issue, of ecological breakdown. So all these things start to create a certain kind of sphere to relook at. And now on the other hand, you have the digitalization of things, so you have suddenly another being. <coughs> uh, if you think of it as a living being, because it's able to think, it's able to do things on its own. So those two things add together, it is relatively different from what you have seen in the past. Uh, what, what the design world has always been is more about uh, the beauty of humans. Uh, what what human is judging. So this this sudden change from focusing on this human uh, and switching it to other beings, uh, I think it's a big challenge now. And it is something that we all have to accept and still be creative about it. You, you can ask sub question that it's easier to talk this way. Otherwise it's like it's like why not use it? We can ask how our which team likes the board. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> like, 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 from architecture to landscape. Your whole architecture. Yeah. 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 Uh, what is the difference between architecture and landscape? I think the answer should be we should always look at art. Because art is always the one that pushed the furthest in the top. Uh, and if you, if, well, you're, you're very lucky because you're in uh, France and you're in the Paris, so artists are everywhere. Uh, and then the way the artists think is always, uh, I think, a lot more advanced than the architects or the landscape architects or the construction industry. And from there, then you try to use your, your, your specialization to, to connect. So, yeah, you need to learn plants, you need to learn a uh, scientific Latin name, uh, you need to know Carolinas from Sweden, uh, taxonomy, and uh, all these things. The architecture, you need to learn all the materials. The supplier name and the tiles, uh, the all these things. So, yeah, it's, it's, those, those, are, those are just a must. But I think that the thinking behind is always something that I, I find fascinating that our trade uh, well in art actually we are not so much about our uh, system mm -hmm. yeah. you are dealing with life a lot yeah yeah like each plant are life and yeah art is life and being alive so pretty much and that's my job maybe <laughs> 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 you your question so we can ask you a question if you want yeah, you can ask any question. You don't have to stick to the question. I mean, yeah, like, we better have a question because it's, it's going to last one hour. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, uh, we believe that the future of architecture is to design a process, not a final finished result. That's question number three. <laughs> <laughs> Again, I think the, the main big thing between working and in school 
is that uh, you have to run business, mm -hmm. and uh, there's always someone paying you. Uh, which is also the reason why, again, salad is run more like rhizome, so that I don't embezzle all the money to myself to buy a Ferrari, four apartments, travel in Paris, to, to stay in very good hotel and all these things. Um, a company obviously has a lot to do with money <coughs> to run it. I mean, we're all in the same machine, which is capitalism. Like in Illinois, in Morocco, in France, in Malaysia, in Singapore, it's all running one system today. Uh, it used to have communism, but then you know, it's collapsed. Right? Um, so to run it like a process, uh, it's a very fascinating question because you think in a lot of manpower. Uh, usually in business, you just want to finish it, uh, you get things across, and then you stop and you move and you stop and you move. Well, obviously, it's also not about object. I mean, in, in cost, when you are outside, it, it should have a continual moving. Uh, it, it should carry on the cost. But um, what we do is that uh, sometimes we save enough money, we save enough manpower. And then uh, they will be brought to trips like this. Uh, I think for five of us to appear, it's, it, it does cost a bit. Uh, but then again, uh, I think this is when you really talk about working together, synergy, uh, knowing each other. Uh, not just they listen to me, what I have to say. It's, I think processes is about relationship. Uh, it's also a relationship that you form beyond your client uh, into the projects, how you feel. Uh, and that, that's the most rewarding thing, of course, when it starts to be with money. Yeah. Um, so it's a losing money thing when you run process. But then again, uh, I know your generation, which is very interesting. So nowadays we understand that, for example, uh, some process, if you start to broadcast it, uh, you can make some extra, at least to cover it. Uh, so I am busy learning to also promote uh, through very short way of making a bit of extra. So that, that, that part, I mean, you're young, I, I don't want to talk too much about uh, money, but uh, it's a very real thing. <coughs> I think that's usually the biggest headache when you have to run the office. Uh, when it comes to that, uh, very few people want to talk about Rhizo. <coughs> you understand Rhizo? How do you say Rhizo? Rhizo. Uh, you, you know, uh, uh, potato uh, is uh, the run by roots, right? Uh, a tree obviously run this way. Mm -hmm. So in your big corporate firm, uh, there are many small root, bigger, big, medium root, bigger root, and then the trunk. So I'm still the head of the office, uh, so I'm actually the tree trunk, and then they are all supposed to to be nice to me. <laughs> Get all the nutrients. Yeah, they have to work hard, and I uh, stay healthy up there. Uh, that kind of. Um, rhizome is when uh, things are like uh, you, for example, uh, Sokjun can start to answer the question. <laughs> yeah, and then when she answers the question, uh, maybe uh, Catherine uh, will feel, oh yeah, okay, there's something she say that I can uh, improvise, mm -hmm. and then uh, she will say, and uh, then it, it works that way, almost like a studio. Uh, what, what at least uh, Ma Lao Shi has decided that the studio should be. Uh, but of course, school sometimes is such that uh, the, the teacher says something and everyone just wants to stay quiet. <coughs> um, it's, it's, uh, it's the human system. I think um, one of the things that why rhizome pick up is I think because uh, information is very easy to get. <coughs> So there is a certain change in how people know that they can they can uh, pop up from everywhere. So this this is the same as I said. Uh, let's say 
uh, this is a project we completed. Uh, it's called a neighboring village. Uh, it, it has to do with allowing nature to take over. This is like in a housing estate uh, suburb. Um, and again, <clears throat> it's it's something that can pop up on its own. Um, on the other hand, when you look at this place, we finish it. Uh, usually, you are a designer. That's where you go because uh, they don't pay you anymore. Uh, we go back. Uh, we do some other things. We. Sometimes we bring the team to, to plant more. We buy our own plants, uh, and then you get uh, little things like this come on their own. Uh, it's uh, very cute. Do you understand what I say? <laughs> <laughs> we, we are always maintenance from plants. For all your projects? Also, it's, it's a very weird thing. Um, we tend to out every drawing. <coughs> um, I think in Singapore, it's, it's, there are boundaries. Like, if you don't tend um, you people will start to think that you are actually getting money on your own. Um, <clears throat> maintenance is usually done by the person who finished the project, and you don't get paid uh, after that usually. Um, so how 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 can this work? Is something we are currently thinking. Um, so we're saying when there's a maintenance, you can have an event. You can create an event today. Um, when there is a like if you catch a non-native, uh, you do a TikTok, maybe you get some money or something. Um, it, it works in, in a way if you think about it, or if not, if it crosses the line of uh, construction, it also enters into another form of creativity, uh, to know how to create a place. Because a, a place is not when you finish, and then it's, uh, you just go. A place is something that you you, you you carry on building together with the community <clears throat> and how the community is willing that to work with you. Uh, obviously then there will be a bit of an exchange and trade and uh, business and you know, merchants going on. Yeah. But yeah, then we, we bought this fish and, uh, and we put it inside their native. So again, if it goes beyond Building, it goes beyond plants, it goes into animals, um, and then obviously it is concerned about human. Um, and then you talk about the new ecosystem, the global ecosystem uh, that will happen <coughs> in the city. Um, yeah, this is Chinese joke. Uh, eight, eight, eight means uh, which. Prosperity, <laughs> wealth, <laughs> uh, a lot of money. Right? Yeah. So uh, people try to buy this on the fish, and they they buy lottery. They, they buy mm -hmm. lottery. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then sometimes they, they, uh, mean they just throw the fish into the pond. Foot, football match appears uh, <laughs> yeah. also sometimes. Yeah. <laughs> like no, yeah, yeah, it's a very Chinese <laughs> thing because we are we are Chinese population. The whole whole life you grow up, people tell you money, 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 money. money. Yeah. We have a lot of money. Yeah. <laughs> I see. Yeah. Um, these are introduced by Singapore. They are authors. Yeah. Yeah, how do you say authors in the uh, French? What do you call them? Oh, it's from <laughs> Wood. 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 Okay, uh, they are losing actually. Uh, they lose the fish. Uh, uh, this is uh, from Africa, this fish. Uh, people put them into the pond. Uh, we didn't put them because uh, sometimes they buy and then they, they think they can eat it after one year. They want to come back and catch and they cannot find it. And there are more and more. And uh, the authors came in um, and they, they are easy to be hunted down because 
this food don't need in the real nature. Yeah. Uh, it's a bit bloody. Yeah. So, okay. but, yeah. It's that we, we didn't take this image. Yeah. Somebody sent it to us. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Look what the, the authors have done to your font. We say it's good. Yeah. Because you get rid of the invasive species. I think it's uh, <clears throat> sometimes when you want this kind of thing to happen, um, in a very real world, you you have to strategize. Uh, you need to tell the client that uh, okay, we are coming back. Uh, if you don't let us come back, this may not happen. Mm -hmm. uh, so there there are always strategy to be taken, so that uh, you. Your partner is always the one that pays you, um, and you have to talk and form the relationship as well. Um, otherwise, it, the, the, the other way to build it is that uh, you tell uh, your colleagues, uh, don't go to the movie this weekend, <laughs> come here and do gardening with me. So that's when you use the team talk. Yeah, uh, weekend you also come in and do work. <laughs> but actually <coughs> it's hardly work because uh, work equals to money. But uh, actually we, we did all these things but uh, it's out of fashion. Yeah. yeah. So uh, um moving to another question. This is about the three climbing robots that you explained to me. Um we are actually having like a sort of uh, question about how can uh, a problem becomes a solution itself when we talk about waste. And uh, the way you use technology is just here as a polluter to create uh, quite an amazing invention. We were thinking about uh, how can waste be used for uh, like so solving some climate change, and we'd love to have your opinion about it. Through the entire list, this is very architectural. 
of all the materials to make sure there's no there's no like cartogens, there's no chemicals, uh, twenty percent recycled content, and things like that. And we found out one problem is actually there's no such products in the market. We had to call people all the way from Poland, you know, uh, somewhere else, and then they say, yeah, we have this product. But then you know, they have to say like, oh, but you have to ship it to Dubai. And it's like, oh, no, sorry, <laughs> I'm not going to do your business, you know, or it's too expensive. Um, so we tried our best to find as much as possible, but at the end of the day, um, to, to figure out whether it's waste or not waste is a matter of perception and how we use it. So this pavilion, for instance, all the steel boltings, they're all bolted. There's no welding. As far as concerned, weldings are for main joints, structural joints. Everything else is bolted. So you can remove it, they can recycle it easily. Right? All the timber, actually, they are not timber. They are actually engineered timber. That means they grow in the lab in Singapore. And then that guy was so interested, you know, he said, I'm going to sponsor your uh, floor. Actually, I didn't want timber floor for this pavilion. But he called us one day and said that I have a new product, blah, blah, blah. But his product that we installed in the office back then, it's, it's really bad. <laughs> we lost a lot of money because we paid him 100,000 Singapore dollars to replace, to do the timber deck, and then within one year it spoiled. And it's, it's a zero waste product, but it doesn't work, you see. But he said, ah, I reinvented it, you know, it's been 10 years, you know back again. So he sponsored the product here. Um, and everything else, we try our best to find as much as possible, no waste and no leftovers. But in reality, the execution on the ground is a different story because I will give you a best example. When you build something on site, these people are in Dubai. Nobody in Dubai is from Dubai. Everyone is from everywhere else. Okay, yeah, everyone we didn't mean any Emirates. We I yeah. were there for one month and yeah. there were no Emirates yeah. that I spoke to. There's only one guy who came over and he said I'm the minister and then he just walked yeah. around. Yeah. <laughs> and I named uh, about 20 people. Make yeah. sure that you don't talk to me. Yeah. <laughs> you know? And uh, you know they're all very handsome with the nice beard and all that. We met French, Australian, where in fact we met Morocco. We met Morocco. We met everywhere. Everyone. Syrians. Uh, we met Palestine, Pakistan, India. Yeah, but then everywhere. no Emirates. No Emirates. Yeah. They stay in the aircon room. Yeah. So uh, it's very very difficult to to do something with the vision. Execution is actually the other half of it. So. Um, we can dream as architects, uh, it's a nice dream, but to actually understand the process, um, we, sometimes they like, because we like to do this thing called system thinking, which is to think, you have an idea, how do you execute the whole system in there? Because that is very important, and we learn a lot from this. So. But your, your question is the robot and the waste. Yeah. So, the robot is very wasteful. Eh? <laughs> yes, in a way, but... Uh, <laughs> why, why, why did you pick the two together? You, you want to elaborate? Because this is one question that I cannot time. Alright, it's like a circular pyramid. Like you have yes. robots, which is technology, which is considered by many as a polluter. Ah, okay. ah. You managed to find a way ah, to do this ah, okay. like in a positive way. That journey is good. And here, like the question is, can waste turn into uh, the mm -hmm. I think we are, that's why I say waste is not, it's not, waste are byproducts and actually waste are useful. We treat it as waste because we see it as waste because the product that is invented is, the byproduct is crap, you know, it's shit, <laughs> it's not good. But if you have a product that actually nowadays, even here, you know, compared to Singapore, Macro, like for instance, the byproduct is actually good. It's not wasted, it can be reused. But this is this is the thing. When you use plastics, then you have to say, okay, what is the byproduct when it's decomposed? Mm. Yeah, because for us, we are strong believers in technology. I we as sustainable champions, we do not believe in in uh yeah, what's all this movement of perma culture. You know, they want us to be hippies. You know, don't wear any shoes and dance in the forest. I don't think that is what we want. You know, we like our toilets. Uh, we like we like a nice counter toilets, you know, nice sink, you know, we like aircon room, we like projectors, we like TikTok, you know, we like all these things. 
The question here is how can we have all these things and yet try to change our mind in a certain sense, use technology to push a way forward that is equitable for all. I think that's the most important. Yeah. So the best example I would give is actually this was very successful. There were many birds there. And then it became a nuisance. So a lot of birds actually found that they built nests within the pavilion. And I got a phone call uh, a few days in, and they told me that there's a lot of birds there. They were shitting all over the floor. What do you do? I told them, if the bird shit on you, you buy one free. You make money. I mean, there's nothing you can do. So the, I think that is for us a little bit change in the mindset. Yeah. Maybe it works. You know, when the animals are there, you change a little bit of the mindset. It makes everyone happier. So you don't have to do too much. So for us, it's a little bit about there and there, but we want to push forward a better way to live. Yeah, not tree hugging. <laughs> Why is this a very difficult definition? Because yes. in nature, it does not used to be such a thing called waste. I mean, you know, the term waste in English means that it is no use. <clears throat> Again, learning from nature, things things go in cycles. Obviously, there's a lot of technology and all this that uh, one talks about. Um, I answer you in a different way. Um, sometimes what you come up with as a project uh, and your client can sit down, it seems like it's a waste. And a lot of people will just can. So waste can be same in this way as well. Um, and then uh, you just forget about it. Like you just make it work. Um, waste is when you, again, tie back to what Quinn can say, sometimes waste has something to do with you have to reinvent the waste. Um, when you reinvent the waste, then the waste is no longer called waste. It is called resource. Yeah. Um, this is how technology comes in also together with. Obviously, technology has a bit of a Frankenstein, Maurice Sector, Archer, syndrome, which is uh, humans are able to create. And the uh, machines are the one that actually is tied to how we think. Uh, we, it influences both sides. So that that is, I guess, waste. It's, it's a tricky thing. <coughs> of course, we're not talking about nuclear waste. Because uh, human lifetime, we don't see so deep. Uh, but otherwise, uh, organic waste and all this. Uh, well, I mean, you know, in uh, city planning, uh, just about 30 years ago, then people start to trace in the urban center um, the ways that the, the urban center produce might end up, let's say, in Nigeria, mm -hmm. uh, in uh, Indonesia. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, we were all trying to tighten all these things today. But it needs a lot of re changing of system <coughs> to make it work. Yeah. And it's changing. It's not generation I mean, issues at all. Yeah, it's yeah. Like anyway, no. yeah. It's, uh, it's, it's always been an extractivist society since uh, <laughs> colonization. Uh, and I think it's, it's starting to change. If you extract, then obviously there are more waste. Because you just keep on taking um, upcycle, recycle, or I mean, there were uh, repurpose, and <laughs> adaptive. These are things where I think architects who, who the design world will really have to start looking. I mean, you're in the building that used to belong to a horse. Mm -hmm. um, and a few weeks. Yeah. No way you not want to be here. Oh. <laughs> so, the other question was about the artificial, but I guess we answered it already. Yeah. Yeah. Every, we believe everything is artificial. Yeah. There's nothing natural. Everything is sad or not? Is it sad? Like, but how does that nature? Do you really want to go camping every day in the forest? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I look at what you are right saying. Maybe you should hear the answer of the landscape architect because the architects are answering. 
okay, when when we come to nature, people might think that nature is like a new realm for us. Like when we say we were living in the city, people might depict it as we are bringing the rest for us into the city area. But uh, for us, is that we are not looking at this way, is that we are looking at an opportunity, like the game mentioned uh, the land that is not being used, we are giving back to the nature. So when we talk about the wild game, it's actually create a different niche, like a different opportunity for nature to come in. Because, like, when we when you mentioned it, you, you can't give up the whole city without any concrete, uh, without your building or your icon, and then go back to the to the forest. forest. And you know, even your toilet, you won't give up, and then you go back to the toilet forest. So when we come to rebuilding, we are not saying that bringing people back to the forest, but we are saying that an opportunity, a niche that gives back to nature to come in. Yeah. It's a shared, it, after the land itself, uh, we are all sharing. We are all coming the same and ancestor. We are actually sharing the same uh, gene. It's just that we evolve to human species. So I think it's good that we look at not only about our own species. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, no, you didn't ask the founders. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, we want to know about yeah, the question. Who, who, who came out with the founders? Uh, the mushroom. How do you say founders in French? Chopinion. 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 Yeah, you have, you have to ask the Chopinion. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so we already did a book called Mushroom and the as well. Yes. Yeah. to us yeah. than to plants. 
actually if you understand the evolution they they came up first mm. uh, and then they grow into like as yeah. tall as a 10 meter like a trees uh, before it collapsed uh, and they are everywhere they are still the biggest living thing in the world uh, the high tree uh, I, I don't have the facts uh, they are also very interesting because uh, mushroom, if you do mushroom, <laughs> if you do mushroom, uh, actually, okay. LSD came from uh, studying on mushroom. Um, it's now currently being studied that the mushroom is able to change our stubborn mind. Uh, yeah, 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 LSD is uh, being started. Of course, you can also jump out from the building after LSD. Uh, There's yeah. some research about how our language was formed. Yeah. That's that took the mushroom. Because your, your, your brain is uh, very fixed by also the society. That doesn't mean I'm, I'm in the school encouraging you to do LSD. I have to declare this video <laughs> <laughs> is running. No, I'm not saying that. Um, but it is used in hospices. Mm -hmm. You know hospices mm -hmm. where people are going to die. Uh, and uh, it, it, in a way, it's used to rewild the mind. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, this is our relationship with nature. Yeah. How you know our mind change sometimes when we interact with other species. Uh, this is obviously consumption. <clears throat> but I, I will share with you uh, some of the things that, I, that inspired me during uh, COVID. Um, so we look beyond plants and buildings. Um, and one of the interesting ones is that uh, there's this little creature called sea squid. Uh, it looks like something that like hard and when you get near it, you squid water out of the plant itself. Uh, it, it starts off as a vertebrate with a backbone. Um, and as it evolves further, it becomes actually just staying on a stone, like a plant, as it gets old, just to stay there and get things moving. It's a very different way of looking at a living thing because we human looks the other way. We become more and stronger and stronger, we move more and more and start to take things, consume them all day. So um, it, it's believed that uh, the human did not grow up in the evolution. Because starting this little sea squid means that evolution was supposed to go into more like a plant or a mushroom. But then uh, we, we stayed on with our uh, and that, that's how we, that's, that's obviously talking about evolution. But then you think about it, uh, you can learn from a sea squid. Uh, you can be less active uh, in <coughs> orgy of uh, destruction that's going on right now because uh, obviously COP15 or the biodiversity system is used. <coughs> there's, um, there, there's also another little creature. Uh, this one, the French is also a salamander. <laughs> and uh, how how different animals actually, whether you believe in evolution or not, that's so <laughs> much. Uh, because there's religion as well sometimes. Uh, but then if, if you look at other beings, like, uh, some salamanders, they don't grow onto the land. They stay as babies, but they are able to live with you. Uh, and some of them, same, same species, they become land animals. They have a choice. So again, choice is uh, something that is, uh, I think, the, the mind is, uh, we, our, our evolution is, uh, we are very powerful in our mind. So the way we are able to also learn from other beings, Sometimes respecting other beings tells us that we go back to this thing that Yohan was saying that uh, yeah, we're not 
the binary fold from this. When 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 Naira wait a better one. Yes. <laughs> yeah. And uh, th that's how actually we start to learn a lot more as well. Mm -hmm. we, I think sometimes we just spend too much time in human and uh, we complain a lot and we gossip a lot. And, yeah. <laughs> Which is fun. I mean, but can be too much. Yeah. COVID by being like a disaster for us, like we have to start inside the small room, but it also an uh, opportunity for us to look forward from the future is with other teacher, other uh, living living like during the COVID we can see that the animals start to come over to the city and we like we can see a lot of me. Then is when we start to look at uh, the space is no longer just fifty percent for the humans or fifty percent for the animals. But it can be a sharing space. Then how do we tie back to the land? Yeah. That is how we So I I I'll bring this closer to design for you. Mm -hmm. Because after all you need to do some vision. Um so Salad has been very keen on using machines to be able to sense what our five physical senses cannot sense. A uh, simple one, uh, UV, ultraviolet. Uh, apparently more name. Uh, if you have cataract, you know cataract. Uh, you can actually see UV because your eye is no longer protected. And you see, actually, you some UV light, but your brain is not born with this to say this is a, a new color. Uh, so it sees a lot more blue. Uh, when Monet painted the water lily, he was suffering from cataract, and apparently the water lily, the color starts to change. It's also because he started to see UV. Uh, so those those are very interesting thing. Why? Because uh, we we always think that we. Our five senses is the only sense of this world. But many living things sense very different things, and uh, I'm sure maybe you sense different from me also. Because you are young, uh, your, your eye is wider than uh, I'm 46, you become narrow. And there, there are all these very diverse ways we all feel and we sense. And uh, this, this is how design can start to change. Because when this this change, uh, that you no longer design only for the majority, and is it true that we always have to stick to majority? Not really. We we can learn to see uh, UV. We can learn to see infrared. We can learn to see. Uh, we can learn to sense sonic, sauna, uh, electronic, uh, electromagnetic, and all these things. So all these things starts to change again how you design the world if you are designing also for other animals. And when you design for them, it's like taking LSD. Your, your brain change, uh, the root starts to move in different ways. It's, it's quite fascinating when you see through other things. I mean, you can see through your girlfriend, uh, you can see through your boyfriend. <laughs> but you can see through a bird, you can see through a frog. Uh, so that, that's the other way to design, I think. And that's when technology comes in to us. We, we think it's quite interesting because technology allows you to see much beyond what we sense. <coughs> the last question. Are you sure you have no question for me? <laughs> <laughs> can you try the other side? <laughs> yes, if you ask, if you ask. You can ask, I think. It's about the maybe advice for us since we feel that it is easy in the capitalistic world to lose ourselves in our pure nature and everything. And maybe you feel that you, you have a very strong aura around you and around your work. So. <laughs> That's really how we feel about it. It's true and everything. So yes, we like to ask the advice to cross you off. Don't buy Ferrari. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> if you don't need it, uh, don't you don't need it. I think. I think you you just have to answer to yourself sometimes. Uh, we, we we call it a. Uh, 
show off money. Uh, a lot of things you do is uh, basically to show off to people. Um, if you are creative, that's the best way to be cool, I think. Uh, you don't need to buy a Ferrari to look cool. Uh, dressing up is good, I think it brings you out. But, uh, some of this thing has a lot to do with, uh, I think, habit as well. I, I, I'm, I'm quite optimistic with your generation. My daughter is 18 this year, and when I look at her, uh, her habit has built it up for her to sometimes not to waste as much as my generation. So I think things are changing. We still call it a culture. Uh, salad, uh, we, we justify our waste. By planting trees, I think. <laughs> no, not really. I think it's, it's how greedy you can be. I think how, how, how much comfort do you need? Yeah. But are you planning to buy a Ferrari? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how to drive. So. <laughs> Ferrari with a driver? No. No. You have a question for me? Mm -hmm. So I'm not so interested. <laughs> <laughs> I have a question for you. What computer game do you play? Uh, World of Warcraft. What? World of Warcraft. World of Warcraft. Uh, World of Warcraft. Wow. Yeah. Ooh, okay. Uh, do you play any Mono Crossing? <laughs> <laughs> you do? Yeah. Isn't it too kawaii for you? <laughs> yeah. What do you look like on Animal Crossing? Um, do you have it? No. Yeah. 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 Okay, do you have a translation? This is the one that you should answer. Yeah, yeah. Oh, this is the one I'm answering. Yes. But I answer it. I want to ask what's your sixth question? <laughs> Yeah, you okay, don't need it. If you really need it, then buy it. If you don't need it, don't buy it. I will answer the last one. It's very close to me because I started my own studio as well to work with them. Um, the mantra of it, the, the theory is we are living in the capitalist world. And like, you know, Slavoj Zizek, philosopher, he always say, you know, it's easier to see the end of the world, found the Lamont, than the end of capitalism. And I kind of resonate with that because what I find now at my age is I don't like anarchy, I don't like chaos, I like order because I have a property. I want to protect my property, yeah? I don't want the guillotine, you know? It's not, it's not my kind of thing. So I agree that capitalist world is here to stay, but how can we make it more equitable? That's, why, that's what we do here. That's what our studio is about. We try to make it more equitable with nature and people. But at the end of the day, we still want to make money. But I like to use this word, excess. We should not have too much excess. For me, the culture of Americanism, of having too much coke, too much suburb, that's excess, too much. We just need just enough. If we can buy maybe one Louis Vuitton bag for two years, I think that's good, you know? It's not wrong to have money. I think it's good because you are successful, you want to enjoy it. But you need to know how to control the excess. And I think for us, 
to be truthful to what you do and have a little bit of indulgence, really good taste, is acceptable in, in, in life. And then you don't lose your way by chasing the money because then you are going in for all the projects for a wrong reason. Because when you go out to work, there's always choices to you. Make a lot of money and be very miserable or be very poor. I don't think it's a trade-off. You can always make a lot of money, yet you know what you want to do. And so but what, what kind of advice do you want? <laughs> I mean, this is a very broad question. What's the advice? What is your advice for the students and teachers? Teacher asked this question. <laughs> <laughs> in general, there's nothing for the teacher or for older or something. What can you? Uh, <laughs> what's your? Idea? What what advice do you want? Are you you want to come to Singapore <laughs> uh, to see how Singapore is this? Um, I think the advice I want to hear about is one that states that there is a future because I'm very pessimistic about uh, what's going to happen and I want to just, I cannot dream right now about what's going on uh, in the future, but I, I, I have some answers about that. There, there is a future. Um, we are working on it. We have the power to change. But our power is limited because we, you see he's 46 and then I'm 32. Uh, in a few days, and we are getting people from the young generation like yourself. And I mean, I had people under me 24, uh, and they are very pessimistic as well. But then they translate to their work, they're not passionate anymore. Then after they say, yeah, you know, I just want to learn 10 mil euro far more, and then do a very simple job, you know. I don't want to do theory, I don't want to do design, I don't want to do market, none. They want simple life, big money, but at the time, it's about also sacrifice, and there is a future if you really want to change it. Because we work in this area, we work with governments, and within the government, we know that there are people who really want to change. And with young people, I mean, we met with a lot of famous engineer company. The head of Singapore, he said he is a vegan because his son, at six years old, said that I want to be vegan. So he became vegan. So I think. Your generation is the one that has the power to influence and change people in power now and in the future yourself. Because don't underestimate yourself. That's what I'm trying. There. And there is a lot of movement now within the undercurrents. Carbon credits are being expensive now. All companies, Congress, Adidas, making reusable stuff, sustainable capitalism, but still good in a good direction. So there is a lot of undercurrent. And if you swim with the current, you don't swim too hard. Yeah? So don't work in oil and gas, yeah? <laughs> <laughs> you want to be great. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> you will know who you are. I think. Yeah. So. But I think you have to ask one question. I know you know this. <laughs> <laughs> You don't have question. Oh yes, Erica. Uh, it's because it's what you said about capitalism. Yeah. And uh, in my opinion, the the excess is the goal, the final goal of capitalism. Yes. So you can't be reasonable in market system. The final objective yes. of the system. Exactly. So. Unless until we find a better system, carbon credits is one of the ways that we are working on something called interspecies money. You put a value in nature, and there are people working on it now. That is giving a thought of yeah. so yeah. it's not working. So, <laughs> so it's, uh, it's, it's, there are people working on all this thing. It's to give value to nature, and if you leave nature untouched, it's going to bring rewards. And if you hear the news recently, you know OPEC, Saudi Arabia, uh, you Emirates, uh, all the countries that you know we are not very friendly with, uh, so, so to speak, uh, the Western world is not friendly with, they're the oil conglomerate. Recently, I think one week ago, Brazil, Indonesia, and India have formed a new OPEC. It's for rainforest. 
because they know that carbon prices in the future will be gold. And they were going to sell to countries like France, to the United States. And they had formed an organization to control the price of carbon credits, control the price of rainfall. You see, this thing is capitalistic. Yeah, maybe bad. But in a way, it's using the system to organize some value for a potential future without anarchy. I think for me, my stance is I, revolution happens when it's anarchy, right? But I don't want to. I don't want to live through that. You know, I don't want my kids to drop on the floor if they don't think that's not a good future for me. <laughs> you know, so I still prefer the system to carry on, but in a more progressive way. That's what I think is better, and in a way that is adaptable to change. That is not too sudden. So, yeah, I think what what Quentin is saying is interesting because things takes time. Yeah, to to change. Uh, I can understand why you feel no future uh, because it takes time. You you need to be patient. I mean, I should be very patient because I'm forty six. <laughs> Not too many years left. Uh, so things things do change, and we realize that. I I realize your generation is changing, and very often, um, and it. People will die, actually. The older people will die. Uh, what just happened is that all the millennials, just, uh, most of them uh, just cross the mark to make money. And then the market force will change according to their habits. Is, is this capitalism? I think capitalism is a machine. Uh, you might want to make it a philosophy that it's a lie, and we're all trapped inside for a uh, it is our social trading, I think that is a capitalism. But uh, there's, there's always the other part of you that is inside. And I think, again, when you do design, there's always that part that is not often being seen, that you feel. Uh, you feel beyond the social system. Um, that, I think, is what that is given to us in design. That it's always the thing that gives the dark spot to a future. Now I want to ask. I want to go tomorrow. Okay. I want to go more for you.
It's a mushroom party. Yeah. <laughs> and this is and uh, you uh, are you are you are you are me doing tai chi. This is the messy head. So could you explain what you were okay. doing to the people in the room? Yeah. So we were just trying to uh, make a little uh, bit of stick and uh, then let's get the results. So uh, we drew like this uh, animal uh, mango strip, which uh, you're going to do a presentation about later. And uh, you um, making like salad dressing and horse. <laughs> <laughs> horse? What is on the tree? Sort of the whole of the coexistence all together with animals, and 